So, hello, welcome back to a new video where I'm going to talk about some tips and tricks about uh, the Peak Design uh, travel tripod, uh, which I got on Kickstarter, so it's not a free copy. Um, and I really like it, um, but we have to keep in mind uh, what it is, right? So, uh, first things first, please uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to have more videos or, or you're interested in our Facebook group. I know this is about the tripods, which is kind of generic, but um, I run a Facebook group together with a few other people, uh, which is uh, growing quite fast, where we share full frame uh, Sony setup tips. So if you're not part of that, uh, please join. Um, or if <laughs> you just want to join this uh, uh, YouTube channel because of some of the other things that I'm showing, that's also totally fine. Um, but I uh, want to make sure that uh, we talk about that. Um, so fee, uh, first thing I want to say before we get into it, I know that this uh, tripod is um, almost um, polarizing uh, many people because of its price, which you can have a ki all kinds of arguments about. Um, I've talked about it before, uh, but I want people to remind that this is a 1.2 kilogram sort of tripod. Um, that means that you have to compare it, in my opinion, with other 1.2 kilogram tripods, including its uh, ball head. Um, that's what I did, and uh, that's how I've been um, um, using it and comparing it. Um, and today I want to talk about a few things that um, I ended up doing, which uh, make sense to me and which are, uh, let's call them uh, tips and tricks. So the whole idea in my mind is, um, can we um, um, figure out some workarounds about things I don't like, or some things that I ended up doing uh, differently than before. So. Uh, I did not, pre like always, if people know me, I did not prepare that well beforehand. So what I will do, I will, will go backwards from the um, the end of the tripod to the beginning and just uh, talk about some things that I like and don't like and then sort of uh, show you how I'm using it and uh, what makes sense to me. So the first thing that uh, I kind of uh, don't uh, like is um, the the feet. So um, the, the, there's plus things and down... Uh, Plus and downsize to this. So normally I would use uh, the Suri ones, which have the spikes that you can turn out. So they're rubber and there's spikes uh, in there. So theoretically, if you go on an airplane, you might get into trouble for that. So the good news is these are not that type, but you have to take these feet out to put a spike uh, ones on there. Not a big fan. Uh, maybe at some point I can come up with a solution that uh, you can still combine the two. Uh, but that's one thing uh, I wanted to uh, sort of uh, say. Um, so the second thing when we are on this side is the clamps. Now, I was never a big fan of uh, clamps. I understand that um, having the rotational ones is also a downside, simply because of the um, uh, you're never sure if they are locked down, right? Many people made this argument. But what I kind of disliked about the old clamp systems is that they would always stick out. And what's really nice about this is that they don't stick out. And that also means that you can use a trick which um, I started using and uh, maybe makes sense to, uh, for you. And that's basically uh, both opening them up and closing them up in sort of one movement. So if you want to open them up, and let me go to the top camera because I think you can probably see it easier. There is a quite an easy way that you can sort of open them up in one go. Of course, I'm now below a camera and it makes it a bit more difficult to showcase it to you, but um, it's quite easy to, over, uh, clamp, uh, to open them all up at once. Make sure, because there's also a bigger one, that you don't open that one up because that will actually remove the leg. I don't think it will happen uh, if you're, um, I don't think it will happen often, but it, it make sure that you uh, keep that in mind. Now, of course, that means you can now sort of let them all fall down and close them up again. So what I will do, just because I don't have enough room here, I will close three of them just to show you what I would do um, when I'm bringing it down. So let's assume that this would be for, for all four legs, right? So you kind of move it out. So now it will, of course, only do it with these legs. And then what I found is that it's quite easy to Basically, again, almost like a rotation movement, close all three of them up in one go. Right, so let me show that again. So open it up. And almost like a rotational movement, you can see that I'm sort of doing it like this. And then there, all three are closed. 
so it's by almost like weirdly enough not on one leg but on all legs like rotating the thing close which you would do with a normal uh the normal uh, uh, rotation uh, variant and not the clamp ones. Um, so that's kind of this interesting way of doing it. Now, I would normally not start at the top ones, but at the bottom ones uh, with uh, when I'm uh, pulling it in. But if I'm doing it out, I will start at this one and then go lower, 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 um, because that feels more stable somehow. So the reverse is also true. So let me do the lower legs which is kind of a weird thing to do it, but let's me do it like that. So let's assume that these are out, right? So I would first do this one, like this, rotate it, then go to the next one, then go to the next one, if I'm uh, opening it up or locking it up. So the same with locking it up, I would open them up, right? And then, uh, yeah, you can, uh, if they're all opened up, so let me show that, theoretically, or practically. <laughs> So if they're sorry if it is not all they are not all in the picture, but so if they're all opened, and of course this makes more sense if you are uh, holding it uh, all the way up. Let me see if the other view is nicer in this way. So let's assume let them all now sort of hang out a bit. So normally, of course, they will be all extended, and the way that you do it is you basically flip it like this, right? And now you can see already they are sort of. Um, um, a nice way to, with one sort of hand grab, close them up. So let me go to the front one again. And you can see, again, almost rotating my hand over the mechanism, and then they're all closed, right? So again, it's sort of this movement where you almost like rotate the whole thing. And also when you're opening it up, you can kind of do the same thing, right? You can sort of rotate it like this. And you get quite handy in sort of opening it up and closing it up quickly, right? So you can sort of go like rotate, rotate. Now, it's not perfect simply because of the way I'm holding it below the camera. But you can kind of see if we do it from that side, that you can kind of, by rotating it, closing them up, right? So let's leave one of them open. So let's say this would be the last one. Then your hand would almost like moving over the three clamps or four clamps and closing it up. So that's the first thing that I wanted to show you. And I think that's uh, kind of nice. And then the second thing that I can in, uh, at least confirm for me, I don't put it on the side of my bag, but I put it on the, 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 the back of my backpack. And uh, I have it under, normally it would, it's a, a low pro, which uh, I have put this netting on top of it. And it's now quite easy to pull up the netting and slide it under. Uh, which means that I don't have to put it on the side of my bag, and that means that um, if I um, am walking around, uh, people hardly notice, especially if I have to put a rain cover on there, and they're also not walking into uh, anything. So the fact that nothing sticks out here is for me uh, quite an important sort of uh, thing. So that's the first thing. Then the second thing I wanted to talk about, uh, which is something I don't like, but I end uh, I mean, came to the conclusion that it's not important. So let me see if from which angle I can show this the best. Maybe from here. So uh, I actually am not a big fan of the way that these clips work. So there's two reasons for this. A, they only have support one mode, right? So you only have this position. And you can then click it, of course. And like I said, I don't really like how it works. And then you have this lower position. Um, now, in reality, I almost never use this lower position, so I will get back to it later. So that means that uh, realistically, I'm never using this clip. I'm only sort of opening it up and closing it up, opening it up and closing it up. So unlike uh, the, uh, the flip uh, design that most other brands use, where you have to flip the whole thing over to open it up, where you per definition have to use the, cl the clamps, otherwise you can't open it or close it, uh, you don't need to do this here. So I, this, um, although I, I find them less usable than some other brands, as the fact that I don't use them at all means that I am not bothered by them because you can just open it up like this, right? You just open it up like this and you're done. Oh, we can't see it, but you're done, right? And you close it up again like this and you're done. 
Now, of course, that means that there is a discussion, which I will get back to, about how do you take low shots, uh, which I will get back to. Um, but um, because I think the official way for me uh, is not uh, that uh, handy. And I, um, I, I think I'm going to do it in the future uh, in the other way. Because it, uh, taking the, the, the head off the, is too much work. So let's go to the head part. So one thing that I was also worried about um, is the fact that you have to open it up. But first something about this button, right? So you see in a lot of videos that people extend the button, which you can do, and then start rotating it. But it also perfectly works if you just leave it in there. And um, I don't really see a problem in using it like this. Of course, if you really need to, you can pull it out and then rotate it, but it's not mandatory. It works perfectly fine if you just leave it in the lower position. Um, so that, that's, that's one thing. Um, then the second thing is, uh, if you normally have a, a, a travel tripod, your head is never, uh, at least uh, almost never, or never, totally flush, because you want to somehow lock it away in a position that it takes less room. And um, what I found that uh, in mo you, it's almost like a comparison, right? So if you would use an, a different uh, design uh, and you set it up, then most of the time you have to open it up and level it. it. There's no other way to do it because most likely it's either in this position or it's somewhat in a weird position because you want to have it as small as possible if you're traveling, right? So let me get a small one. So not a very good example, but if you take, for example, this one, most likely it would be in, for example, something like this position to the side, something like that. Because, well, you want to have it small and in between the, the legs uh, to carry it. And per de definition, you have to open it up, put it in a horizontal position, and then lock it down again, right? So you have to level it. So that always takes time. What I found is that, an, um, uh, what I found is that uh, if you keep it totally locked down in the lower position, so like it is now, um, then it's always level. Now, always level, of course, means that the ground is level, but more often than, than, than not, the ground is indeed level. So I almost never take it out of this position because it's high enough for me, especially with uh, most of the mirrorless cameras where you can just open up the screen, right? To look it down a little bit, and if need be, I will go like this and look at it. But in many cases, I don't even bother to take it out of the disposition. Because per definition, if the, the ground is level and your legs are extended, nine out of 10 times, it will be correct anyway. And of course you can check that with all modern cameras uh, because of the leveler, right? So you can see that your leveler, let me go to the leveler quickly. Okay, there it is. You can see that the leveler, you can see if it's level. Okay, let me do it like this. You can see that it is level and you can make sure that your camera is level. If it's not, then you can still sort of extend the, the, the ball head, right? Or you just open it up again using the little screw and then open it up a tiny bit like this and then of course level it, right? But the fact that, uh, of at least what I found, is that in most cases uh, it happens more the other way around. So you can do this, but I think um, uh, in quite a few cases, you just don't have to do it. I will let, just leave it in this position and I find that the, my camera is level. So of course this depends on the underground, etc., etc. But you have to compare it again with the old situation where it would always, you always had to level it with the ball head because the chances are that your ball head was not in the level position anyway. So um, I hope this kind of makes sense. Um, so then, the, the, the second thing about this part is that um, uh, I tend not to put it in a full position. I think that makes it less stable. Uh, I end up only extending it a little bit, and in most cases that is uh, good enough for me. So then to the top part. So for the top part, there's two things that I would uh, like. To refer One thing I don't like, but actually I use the leveler in the camera, is um, uh, this uh, leveler tool here. 
Um, in some of the prototypes, this was green uh, material. It's now white material. I first figured this was broken, but uh, looking at the reviews, uh, all the production versions have this white fluid in there. Um, so even more difficult to use. Um, I found it useless anyway. So um, yeah, not using it, but using the one on the camera, which is totally fine with me. So um, then this little pin, I see a lot of people removing it. Um, even if they're using uh, uh, or if they're using other um, uh, plates, please don't do that. Leave at least one of them in, if possible both, because at least I've checked uh, all the L brackets that I have, and I have about ten. You can see that in an old video I made. Uh, but you still want to be able to lock things down. So let me show this on on my camera, and I'm now using an A7R4. And you can already see, I will make a nicer one that I put like a, a little square there so that I know where to put it into the, to the, to the lock. So I have to do it a tiny bit like this because I think it's probably the only way that I can show you. But um, I'm not sure if I can even show you. But if I use the arrow, right, so that I'm using, you can see it's very easy. Well, let me try to figure this one out. So what you can see for me is very easy to find the spot to be able to lock it in. So let me first unlock it, right? So there we go. I know where it needs to go and I can just lock it in. But the important part, and now I can sort of put it down again. The important part, notice that I could have done it like this, by the way. So let me try to do it like this, which is a weird position, but you can see how easy it is for my, me to find the spot now. But also notice that it still has this locked in uh, function because at the bottom of this L bracket, there are different holes where the locking pin will fit into. Now, um, this is true for most plates. I found a few plates that it does not work like that, but please don't remove all of these pins if there's no need for it, right? Because it will still give you the protection of uh, basically the triple protection, right? So you have the lock, of course, which uh, if by accident you now press it, your camera will fall out, but it can't now slide out and drop to the ground because it still has this locking pin. In this case, you can see I can move it a few millimeters even before I close it up. Right? We talked about the closing up before already, so now it's totally closed and in a safe mode. Um, so I think most plates will work like that. Um, so uh, yeah, that will be another advice. Don't take it out, the, the locking pin out, if not need be. Um, I'm still looking. Let me open it up again and take it out. Um, I'm still looking at replacement pins for this because I do think it's a little bit sharp and I think there could be a better sort of almost rubbery or half, I wouldn't say rubbery, but a little bit more polished design here so that it uh, doesn't, uh, is not as uh, roughing up your bottom plate. Uh, or I will put something on the bottom plate, some rubberized material so that it does not uh, scuff it up too much. Um, I also, what I talked about before, it would have been nicer if they do, didn't may only make two holes, but they would have made a series of holes here, because then you could actually kind of uh, decide where to put these locking pins so that they fit your L bracket or your uh, your ground uh, plates. So that's another thing that I wanted to uh, sort of uh, um, give as a as a tip. Then um, going into low mode and. Um, I found that um, um, I've got all the different parts, right? So I ordered all the different parts. So yes, I can put it in this, uh, take all the really feet off and put the, the small conversion kit on there or the tiny conversion kit or whatever the name is um, to be able to make it a small, a light tripod. Then you can also take the middle part out, right? So you can take this part out and only use that part. And then you can go really low. But in practice, that means that you have to open up the ball head, so you have to take it out like this and rotate it and then find the hole somewhere. So there's the hole and you have to take it out and then you have to take the other part out and it's just too much work in my opinion. Um, so what I found is that a, a, a nicer way for me to do it to, to get the same shot is just to put it in low hanging uh, mode. So basically reversing it in the camera. Um, and uh, I think most cameras, and that's not sure if everybody yeah, knows this. I know this is a tip that I've posted on the Sony groups and quite a few people are still surprised by this. But if I take a picture like this, right? 
Um, uh, of course, it's now not upside down. But also, if I take a picture totally reversed, right? So let me try to aim and then take a picture. You will see that if I go into review mode, it will have automatically reversed both pictures, right? So I am totally okay in having the camera totally uh, reversed. So and that means that uh, if I'm uh, I'm uh, outside, I don't have to run as many risks in sort of taking the whole thing apart and re reversing it. But I can just either leave the camera in there, right? So leave it locked in, and then open it up. So of course then the the it's kind of difficult now to show. Then this would be open, right? So let me try to show it. So this will be open, right? Um, and uh, I, you take the, the lock of the little part out here, which you basically have to press a little bit and then you can turn it. So uh, press, pull and turn. Now this part again, I'm not sure about. I'm not sure if I will leave this in. Because with the action I'm going to show now, there is a risk that you lose this thingy when you're doing this uh, and it drops somewhere in the mud and you, it's gone. Um, but I think instead of uh, uh, really taking it apart and put it in low mode, uh, I found that just opening it up and... Oh, of course normally this will be going a lot smoother if I'm not trying to do this under a camera. But just taking it out, then reversing it, with sometimes already the camera attached, right? And just putting it back in here. Uh, I have to find the hole. Putting it back in here and then putting the little clamp part uh, back. And now putting the camera uh, in the lower mode is actually a much nicer way of doing it. So um, um, let me show you hopefully not in a too dangerous situation uh, like this. And again, I'm now doing it kind of uh, stupid because I'm trying to keep it in one of the camera views. But you can see that if I get the camera and I lock it in again, right, it's easy to lock in because of, well, if I did not put it on the lock mode. Um, hold on. Pom, 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 pom. But you get handy with this, especially if you know how you are holding it, right? So of course the lock is now open, as you can see. So it's quite easy for me to uh, lock in the camera, right? Again, because I know where the arrow is, I can clip it in quite easy. I lock it up, of course. Now it's in a position I can actually see. You can't see it, but I can actually see that I can't reverse it yet because, well, it will hit the ground. So the nice thing, I can sort of hold it uh, like this. Then open up the little screw, ring it up a little bit, so I know that, okay, I mean, uh, it's, it's clearing the lens, if that makes sense, right? So tighten up the little screw, and now I know that um, I can sort of turn it around, and we are in low mode. So let me reverse camera, and there you can see it's clearly in low mode. And of course, now I can open up this one again, and I can, can sort of position it in any mode that of any direction that I needs to be. Um, and I think this works uh, very well. Um, you have to remember, of course, lefty is lefty and righty is righty is now reversed because you're upside down, but it's not a big deal. And of course you can flip the camera and since the, 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 the camera automatically reverses it, I don't think this is, uh, again, a, a big deal. Uh, you also understand why I think now the locking mechanism is quite important because if for some mistake this uh, is not locked, you can see that the camera is still safe. Um, yeah, so that's uh, one thing uh, that uh, um, I think uh, I won't be using. I won't be taking off this little part, so the, the, the top part, uh, I will just use it in this mode because I think taking uh, part, parts of the tripod is actually too much work for the gains that you are getting. One other thing that I noticed that if you uh, want to do multiple uh, of these low shots or if you're not sure, uh, if you're walking around, uh, you can actually leave it uh, uh, in this mode in a way. Uh, so let me take the camera off, which is also quite doable now, right? So you can see, not too difficult to get it off. And I'm pretty sure if you want to, you can also become very handy in putting it on in that mode. Uh, but one of the nice things, if I, and you can't really see it, but of course I know the, the top part, I'm opening it up. If I put it in its lower position, lowest position, 
right? So there's something like this. You can see it's hitting the ground. And now if I close it up, of course it won't fully close, but um, this is not that much worse in width than my, so in, than my old tripod. So I'm not saying that I will always leave it like this, but if I'm just moving a few meters or a few hundred meters, I might actually leave it in this position because then I don't have to reverse it when I'm getting to the new place. So I want to take again a low picture. I can just sort of set it up, open it up, right? Uh, put it, uh, turn the, the, the knob up, right? Put it in the position that I want. Click my camera on or reverse it again, like I showed you. Put the camera on, then reverse it back and be done with it. So um, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I think uh, that um, for me taking this apart every time just to do a low shot is also does not uh, make uh, too much sense. So let me put it in its normal position and think if I can come up with another small tip. I'm not sure this might be it. So in general, I think I um, I think this is a, a, a big improvement over some of the older designs. Um, I know people um, will have uh, mixed feelings about uh, the stability and um, uh, other um, uh, factors. Um, for me, uh, given that it's only 1.2 kilograms, I think um, um, I'm, I'm quite a, kind of impressed with uh, the result uh, so far. Um, there's also a little hook here that you can put your peak design plug in there. And what I did on my bag, I put a small uh, extra quite a thick ring on there so that I can quite easily put my bag here. Uh, what I would like uh, them to, uh, is to explain how much pulling power this actually has because there's a lot of um, um, thrust being uh, put on this structure here, both in reverse mode and also in this mode if you are hanging something on it. So um, yeah, again, um, let me see if I have more tips. I actually kind of like how the, so probably best to leave it like this. I kind of like, oh, oh it's also in the picture. Oh, that works. So let me, uh, I kind of like how you can sort of now move uh, this around. I think that works very well. Also, if you lock it in, so let me lock in the camera. Although you're now looking at this view. So if I lock in the camera, please lock in, so, and close it up. Um, I think, I kind of like how you can sort of move this about. Sorry if this is not the best camera angle, but I kind of like this whole idea about quickly, especially if you are, if it's not water, uh, uh, if it's not uh, totally level. Leveling is very easy to do. Um, so there's quite a few things that I like. I, I can open the battery door still, which is kind of nice, as you can see on this small rig design. Um, so uh, yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, so far I'm quite impressed. And like I said before, most of the time, um, and that's one thing that people say about this bull head, most of the time I leave it in the lower position. So of course then you have to unlock it so that it really finds its lower position, if that makes sense, and then lock it up again. So that is all the sides are flat, if that makes sense. So let me see if I can show you one. So that means that it's really um, yeah, in a down position and you will find that most of the time it's, uh, it's uh, level. Of course that depends if the ground is level, etc, etc. But um, yeah. Oh, there's another one that I forgot, which is now good because I can show you in this weird sort of, I'm blocking my face camera view. Um, but one thing that is also quite nice is that um, Again, as extra protection, I think, uh, so let me unlock it again, right? So let me put the bull head, so it was not totally down because otherwise it would not have moved. So something weird is going on, so that's bad. Okay. So um, uh, one thing that I also kind of uh, like is that uh, to do is of course now if I open it up, which I'm doing now, again, it's locked because of the pin is still there. But what I also uh, do is that I use my Peak Design um, leech basically again as an extra protection because otherwise it will be flapping in the wind anyway, right? Depending on what you, you are doing. Um, so what I've started doing is basically strapping this one around this, like this, and then putting it in there. Now, even if something would, would go wrong, 
it will still be sort of attached by this part. Um, and that also works in reverse mode. And in reverse mode, you can actually sort of close this one a bit so that there's no way that it could go off. Now, it does not mean that it will save your camera every time, all the time, but it might help you with a mishap that it uh, doesn't uh, go falling to the ground in one big uh, sort of uh, jump, but it might end up sort of uh, bungling at the side of your... Uh, um, uh, your tripod and I think that's not bad and you can just open it up again and if you're taking it off you can just sort of remove it like this right so normally of course it will be on your on your hand and so that means that this is in a certain uh, size right so for me it's something like this right so it's not that difficult if I want to put it on a tripod to basically take it off put this over the thingy and then uh, lock it in, right? So here we go. So again, um, uh, just uh, safety, 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 right? So there's at least now two or three things that should go wrong before my camera really goes uh, tumbling down uh, to the ground. So I'm um, not sure if there's anything else I can tell you. Maybe in the future we'll give another update, but I think some of the negativity or polarization that's going on about this tripod is basically, um, uh, stop saying basically, but I think it's undeserved. I think it's a very interesting end of innovation, uh, what uh, Peak Design has done. And um, it will find its way, at least in my bag, and, but, and you have to find some new tricks uh, about some parts that you might have done differently before and uh, which I'm now doing in a different, uh, different way. But overall, I'm quite happy with it. I will use it like this. I won't put it in this bag. I actually also took the extra tool parts out because I, uh, I'm just the same as with the, 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 um, uh, the phone uh, part. Uh, I'm not sure if I will leave it on because I, I think I will lose it, right? So I won't put it in the bag. I put, uh, put the tool in my uh, bigger bag, uh, uh, which is a normal size and normally, let's see if, it, if I have it in my pocket now. No, I don't. Normally I have a tool in my pocket anyway, which has the four millimeter uh, clamp uh, that you need. So um, I'm not too worried about that, to be fair. Um, so um, that means that I took it off the, off the, off the leg and uh, also thinking about not putting the foam part in there and just also putting that in the bag so that the mechanism, uh, I can't lose it, that's basically it. Because I will put it bare on my back, although it will be below this um, uh, netting construction. So basically the idea is that I can pull up the net and then put it in, and then uh, yeah, it will automatically close up again on the back of my backpack. So um, yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching, and hopefully this has helped a few owners in some tricks that they uh, didn't notice before or didn't see before. Um, and thank you for watching. Bye bye.